Were there any songs on LPs that, that you'd like to mention that were uh, ones that you thought maybe should have been singles and, and they, for one reason or another, were not? Mm, just trying to think. Yes. On the Connie and Clyde album, somebody else was taking my place. I thought it was a hit record. And there was another who's sorry now. Did you ask about it or not? No, I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I, I mean, I, it was up to me to do it. I, I had, I had, in my MGM contract, I recorded as many songs as I wanted, as many albums as I wanted, with whatever engineer I wanted, with whatever arranger I wanted, in whatever studio and whatever country. And if I didn't like it, I didn't have to release it. All right. So it was a totally, it was total autonomy up there in MGM. And because there were no other major international artists in the label at the time. I'm, we had great artists, you, you know, Lainey Kazan was on the, on the, on the uh, label, and, and Ella Fitzgerald, and, but we're talking about major sales. There was no mm -hmm. international best-selling artist. So um, when, when I resigned with them in, in 61, I did so for two main purposes. I would not have been able to have that kind of autonomy anywhere else because I would have even with guided labels in CBS or uh, Capital because they they w had a lot a lot of major stars. I would not have had the autonomy to do that. Just go to, to go to uh, Spain and decide to cut the session without asking anybody. I didn't have to. And so I um, and the other reason was because Frank Walker was like my uncle. He was the president of MGM at the time. And he was, he used to write me letters, your Uncle Frank, you know, to my niece Connie. Mm -hmm. And I felt that they had put such uh, nine bonds and, and money into my recording sessions. And incidentally, in that contract, I had no, there were no session recruitment costs. In other words, that, you know, you record a song that you take, they, they, right off the top, before they give you royalties, they take the cost of the session off and all ancillary costs. I never was charged one penny for anything I ever recorded. Totally. It doesn't happen. It's never happened. But because Frank Walker was, I had such, you know, I had a feeling of loyalty to MGM because they stuck it out with me. Did you meet Joni James also at MGM? No, I didn't. I'll tell you what my one experience with Joni James was. I loved Joni James. Oh, I, I would think so, yes. I loved her. As a matter of fact, yesterday, uh, my, my ex-husband loves Joni James, so I went out and bought a whole bunch of Joni James records, just put notes, and I, and I, I put them on cassettes for her. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, but the thing I do remember was that I got a call to go to MGM that day, and my manager and my father couldn't make it, so I was there all by myself. And I waited for four and a half hours while Ms. James was in conference with the president of, and the other people at MGM. And finally, after all the secretaries left and Ms. James and all the executives left, I was told that I, my contract, had, this was my last record, that they were dropping my contract. And I said, well, that's it. I said, that, that's what it's like to, to be a star. I said, either you're a super, superstar or a super schmuck, that's it. <laughs> But that was my own bad. I never met her. I mean, she just walked out. <laughs> the other day when we talked, uh, you said you would tell me the story about uh, when you met Elvis. So how, how did that come about? Well, what, the first time was when uh, he came to my show, the Sahara. And it was New Year's Eve, and he was with Anne Margaret and a whole group of people. It was 60, 60, or 61, right after uh, Grace died. I mean, his mother died, right after she died. And I did Mama dedicated it to his mother and he was in hysterics he ran out of the room the next day he sent me two dozen yellow roses with an uh. apology and when we were doing movies together at MGM at the same time you know at different movies but on, on a lot together we used to sit in the uh, empty sound stage and talk and I I said you are surrounded by people who are going to destroy your life you you just have got to stop with all the stuff you're using. And I said, I just, he said, would you come to Graceland and let me know who those people are? I said, I could tell you one right, right, right off the bat, that's Red West. I said, when you die, and you will, from taking all this garbage. I said, he'll write a book about you, and he did. It was exactly what I predicted. Yeah. And, when, and, and after he died, they, there was a show in New York called Stanley Siegel, and they were going to do a tribute to Elvis. And Red West was on, and you know, counting his book. 
And I said, look, I came here to praise Elvis, not to bury him. I said, no, I, I, if this continues, I'm walking off. So um, I, I said to him, to Elvis that day, I said, if I came to Graceland and I talked to these people really one-on-one, -on -one, I said, I, I could figure them out. I said, but you won't do anything about it because you need them. I said, unfortunately, you, would, you wouldn't be able to live, do without them. That's your security blanket. And so it would be, be a wasted trip. And you never went. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one other thing about Elvis. Sure. When we were doing, first of all, he was always a gentleman. I have to say that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, you know, women, women I'm sure, uh, five minutes a day were a part of his life, but he was always a gentleman with me and with anyone, anyone else that I've ever known that he met. Always a ma'am and, and all that kind of stuff. On the anniversary of his death, I don't remember what it was, but what year it was, but it was on the news. We did a half an hour interview, and on the show was um, uh, his good good friends, two two best friends. Um, was one was his, his, his best man, uh, Joe Esposito. Joe Esposito, right? Mm -hmm. And the other one, um, uh, uh, the other fellow who was very close to him. They were only they were his tr two true friends, and so I said. Joe, and, and incidentally, the, that day, um, uh, Sam uh, Phillips was on the show, mm -hmm. but he, he, he wasn't on the show, he was backstage, we were talking backstage, and I said, I'm going to ask him, why didn't they stop this? And I did, I, I said, Joe, I said, you're so close to Elvis, and I know that from speaking to you, that you really loved him. He said, well... He said, if I had said anything, he said, I tried. He said, but I would have been out of Graceland. Isn't that sad? Yeah, it is. You don't remember who the other person was? Oh, no. I'm trying to think of his name. I'm not sure. Who was this? Wait, one second.